I want to talk today about Toyota 4AGE, in particular, ISC devices, the device that makes the Toyota idle. Watch this for a moment. <clears throat> see this bimetallic spring and see this flame here? Watch the spring. Keep an eye on it. Look what's happening to it. Hey, see the spring? It's now changed direction. It used to be straight up and down, and now it's turned around anti-clockwise. <clears throat> this goes in this end of the idle speed device. And it uses this piece of plastic here which goes into the slot like that and it turns that shaft in the motor like that. When it turns that way, the idle speed rises. When it turns that way or vice versa, the idle speed drops. <clears throat> when you come across to the car, you have your throttle bodies here and underneath it, you can see the little grey device down here. There it is there. It is bolted to the cylinder head. On a Toyota 4H, it's not getting water supplied to it. It's getting thermal transmission through the alloy of the head from the water jacket to the alloy of the device, which heats the bimetallic spring, which brings the idle down. When you start your cold motor, the bimetallic spring is sitting here. This is sitting here. In turn, it turns this to a, a raised, open state. And if I was to blow in this hose like this, let's put it here like this, put my mouth on here, and turn this, watch what happens. There I can't blow. There I can blow very freely, right? So inside of here, it's a valve and it's a tumbler and it's opening and a cutting, when it's turned, opens and allows more air to rise and go through the device. But it's totally controlled by the bimetallic spring uh, becoming hot, from the heat transfer of the cylinder head onto this device. Let's go to the car and watch what happens. Okay, here's the car. I took the hose clamp off the intake manifold where the device feeds. Okay, when I pull this off, Okay, now it's, it's hunting. Run, run, run. If I block it off, and I set the idle with my finger, right? That's exactly the same as the device being hot and cold, limiting the air. If I take my finger higher, higher, away. Now the question of the day. Let me shut this off. The question of the day, here's the complicated question. Why did the motor hunt? I'll tell you why. Here, you have a throttle position sensor. Here we introduced an ear leak, full noise. What? Any ear increase going into the manifold equals increased revs. But the throttle position sensor said to the ECU, I'm going down the hill. The motor's hot. I'm going down a hill. The throttle was closed. How can the revs be that high? That's what it told the ECU. The ECU said, there's only one condition that causes that, and that is 
that you're going down a hill with your foot off the throttle. Then the ECU said to the four fuel injectors, turn off while going down a hill because we'll save some fuel. And then to stop the motor from stopping idling, what then happened was when the ECU from the distributor saw more than 1200 RPM, it said turn the injectors back on or we're going to stall. Then the injectors turned on, the air leak was already happening and the cycle started again. It revved up, the ECU said the throttle is closed, it said cut the fuel injection. And then the rev started to drop and when it got down below 1200 RPM, the ECU says turn the injectors back on or will stall. That's called hunting. And it's caused by a couple of reasons. And it's nearly always you have an air leak. Or your idle speed control, like over here, is jammed fully open and you are just letting copious amounts of air through. And it has the throttle position closed. Hence, like I said, it goes into the hunting like you're going down a hill and then trying to recover itself so it won't stall. A few years ago, I came across a cool idea. One of these. This is nothing but a ball valve. Okay, you can see through it in that direction. But again, if you turn it like this, you can control the amount of air just like I did with my finger. All right, so number one, you could just put it here, okay? If you're tired of paying a mechanic uh, an hourly rate, and you don't really mind if your car has, a, has no high idle when it's cold, then you could just put this here and turn this tap until you get the desired idle. If you're quite particular, you could run a piece of rubber hose into the cabin of your car, and back out for safety, get a little bit of air from here, and you could be in control of your idle. The real fix to the problem though, is to take a few minutes, undo the bolts holding your ISC device onto the vehicle, take both ends off it, do not, do not smash this end, it's not a piece of steel, it's a piece of ceramic, uh, okay, Work it back and forward, back and forward, back and forward with lots of CRC until the bearings in here come free. Right? And then start putting it all back together. When you have it back together, if you want to more modify the idle speed, pull out the resin from that little Allen key. Right? Because that little Allen key, you'll see it down in here, it's pretty hard to see on the camera, but that little Allen key comes to rest against that ledge there. Okay, and by turning that, when the motor is at operating temperature, you set the base idle. And by putting this in here, undoing the screws, and turning this left and right, you set the cold idle because the bimetallic spring is cold and is facing a different direction. And you that is those two screws there are setting the cold speed. But the real problem all the way along is this is seized. The bearing here and the bearing here are seized. Remember my words, don't smash that thing on the end, it's very fragile. Work it back, forward, back, forward until you have it all free. Put it all back together and your idle will work. If your valve is damaged in some way, go and buy a ball valve or jump on AliExpress and get another $20 valve. The problem with that is you have to adjust it yourself with the limit on the side under the resin for your base idle, for your motor. Well, I, I hope this is really... Um, demystified how the ISC valves work on a, on a Toyota, especially on a 4H, because it's really a purely mechanical device. Some would say, well, what is this for? 
Why is the ECU uh, have any control over this? Well, this is a, a magnet, and what I think the ECU does is under certain settings, it holds it very steady. Okay, that's all I think the ECU does with the ISC. I don't think for a minute that the ECU drags this left and right. I think it holds it in pause moments so it, so it doesn't oscillate. Um, that's what I think that's on the end for. So if you've got a car, in conclusion, that's going run, run, run. Your ISC is seized, and it's seized in an open way. Pull it off, fix it. If you can't fix it, <clears throat> get a ball valve. If you're on the cheap, set your own idle. And I hope this video's really uh, helped you a lot. Thanks, thanks for listening.